Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, falling on grenades, the indestructible Jacqueline H. Lucas. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service with amazing lectures from top professors. You can get a free trial by going to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food. Link in the description below. Would you fall on a grenade to save your friends? How about two grenades? Well, Jack H. Lucas did, and he became the youngest man to be awarded the U.S. Medal of Honor. Born Jacqueline Harold Lucas in Plymouth, North Carolina on February 14, 1928, Jacqueline was a natural athlete who quickly rose to captain of the football team at his high school, the Edwards Military Institute. By the age of 14, he looked much older, relatively tall for his age, 5 foot 8, and brawny at 180 pounds. Because of this, Jack had no trouble convincing the Marine Corps recruiters that he was 17 when he enlisted in August of 1942. Notably, to enlist at 17 as opposed to 18, Jack needed a parent signature, so he forged his mother's. Jack did basic training at Paris Island, South Carolina, and qualified as both a rifle sharpshooter and a heavy machine gun crewman. In November 1943, he was assigned to the 6th Base Depot of the 5th Amphibious Corps at Camp Catlin in Hawaii. There, he achieved the rank of Private First Class in January of 1944. However, after reviewing a letter Jack had written to his girlfriend, military censors realized that he was only 15 years old. He was then removed from his combat unit, but rather than sent home, something he argued heavily against, he was assigned to truck driving. Of course, being in the rear with the gear was not Jack's idea of military service. Angry, he got in so many fights that he was ultimately court-martialed and spent five months breaking rocks and consuming mostly bread and water. Released from the stockade by January of 1945 and still determined to see combat, Jack walked away from his post that month and stowed away on the USS Diol, a transport ship headed towards fighting in the Pacific. Because he left his assignment, he was declared a deserter and reduced in rank to private. Now closer to the action, after hiding for about a month, Jack finally turned himself in on February 8, 1945, once again volunteering to fight. On February 14, he turned 17, and by February 20, he got his wish and was fighting on the island of Iwo Jima. During the battle on February 20, 1945, Jack and his comrades were advancing towards a Japanese airstrip near Mount Suribachi. Taking cover in a trench under heavy fire, Jack realized they were only feet away from enemy soldiers in a neighboring trench. He managed to shoot two of the soldiers before a grenade was thrown in his trench. Thinking quickly, Jack threw himself on the grenade, shoving it into volcanic ash and using his body and rifle to shield the others with him from the pending blast. When another grenade appeared directly after the first, he reached out and pulled it under himself as well. His body took the brunt of the blasts and the massive amount of shrapnel. His companions, they were all saved, but his injuries were so serious that they thought he must have died. Only after a second company moved through did anyone realize he was still somehow alive. Jack endured nearly two dozen surgeries and extensive therapy and convalescence. Despite the surgeries, over 200 pieces of shrapnel remained in his body for the rest of his life. Shortly after his act of heroism on February 26, 1945, the deserter classification was removed and he was restored to the rank of Private First Class. Ultimately, all 17 of his military convictions were also cleared. Nonetheless, he was unfit for duty and discharged from the Marines on September 18, 1945. On October 5, 1945, President Harry S. Truman awarded Jack and 13 other recipients at the ceremony the Medal of Honor. Notably, however, at 17 he was the youngest there, and the youngest ever to receive the award. For his bravery and his service, Jack also received the Presidential Unit Citation, American Campaign Medal, Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, the World War II Victory Medal, and a Purple Heart. So what happened to Jack after all of this? Besides graduating high school and earning a business degree, at the age of 31, he enlisted as a first lieutenant in the 82nd Airborne Division of the U.S. Army. During his first training jump, according to his team leader, Jack was the last one out of the plane and the first one on the ground. You see, neither of his parachutes opened. Despite this, and an approximately 3,500-foot fall, he miraculously survived with only minor injuries. Two weeks later, he was back, jumping out of planes. Once he returned to civilian life four years later, he opened a chain of beef-selling businesses in Washington, D.C., married a few times, including one wife who tried to have him killed, and later, with the help of D.K. Drum, published an autobiography aptly titled Indestructible. Jack lived to the ripe old age of 80, dying on June 5, 2008, from leukemia. 
A more recent individual who jumped on a grenade to save a fellow soldier was Lance Corporal William Kyle Carpenter. On November 21, 2010, while in Afghanistan, a grenade was thrown into a sandbagged position. Rather than run, he used his own body to shield the other soldier with him from the blast. Like Jack Lucas, though severely injured, Carpenter lived and was awarded the Medal of Honor in June of 2014. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you like learning, and to be honest, you are watching the Today I Found Out channel, so I'm pretty much going to make a wild guess that you do, then you will love The Great Courses Plus. They are currently also offering viewers of this channel a free trial. The Great Courses Plus is an on-demand video learning service, and it's got great lectures from top Ivy League professors, as well as experts from various other places like uh, the Smithsonian, National Geographic, and a whole bunch of others. And there are not a small number of lectures either. There are 8,000 lectures on the platform with everything from science to chess to cooking. It's, it's really a huge range of stuff. I've personally really enjoyed uh, a lot of their history content. And if you finish this video about military history, I'm going to guess again that you probably will too. One series that I was looking at was History's Greatest Military Blunders. and Loads of content about that. It's really worth a watch. Watch. Basically, The Great Courses Plus is like a university education, but at your own pace, no tests, no schedules, and it's all incredibly easy to access. You can do it on your PC, Mac, tablet, phone, whatever. Indeed, they've also recently added audio streaming, so you can listen and learn on the move. I do a lot of running, so uh, I, like, I like listening on the move. You can just plug right in. It's super easy. And then if you want to switch back to the media experience on the computer, very easy, just like that. So yeah, it's all great stuff, and you can try it for free. Get your free trial by going to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food or just click on the link in the description below. And do remember that doing that helps support this show. So a big thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring. And as always, thanks to you for watching.